Hey guys, my name is Abhishek and I'm a first year university student at Deakin and today I want to share with you my experience uh, about how I came into uh, medicine. I'll tell you a bit more about myself. So I was actually born in India. I lived there for two years before moving over to Dubai. I lived in Dubai for 10 years. I completed my junior high and then I moved over to Canada. I stayed in Toronto for about two years before finally moving over to Edmonton, uh, where I've been staying there since. So I've kind of traveled a lot and I've definitely appreciated all the cultures. Um, I loved exploring all the uh, cuisines that come, come along with it. I've been to Africa on wild, wild, on wild safaris. I've been to uh, Kuwait. I've, been also, I've also traveled over to India. Um, so I definitely appreciated and uh, definitely enjoyed all the traveling. Uh, but I'm definitely glad to settle and kind of just stay put in one place for now. Uh, we did move quite a lot uh, back in childhood. I I really love Canada because it's really a salad, uh, a, a fruit salad of multiple cultures. And I really enjoy all the different cuisines that come with it. As you can tell, I'm probably a huge uh, foodie. Uh, my hobbies, I love enjoy playing chess. I love playing uh, soccer during the summer. I also really enjoy uh, snowboarding, especially um, when when there's snow in the mountains and it's not really cold. It's uh, just at that right temperature, minus 15 Celsius is just perfect. And there's sun and you're going down the mountain and then there's sunset um, on the other side of it. And it's just an amazing, amazing feeling. You're just coming down the slope for uh, 10 minutes and uh, I, I, I think that's just an amazing experience to have. Other than that, I also do enjoy uh, playing board games. I love my games. I play Pandemic, I play Settlers of Catan, I play Ticket to Ride, and I play a lot of those nerdy games uh, uh, that, that I won't get into too much detail with. Um, so other than that, um, I also, um, on my free time, I also like to do some sort of programming. Uh, I love programming just because it helps you kind of think of it things in a very systematic manner. And the fact that, um, you know, that you can automate some things is also um, pretty awesome to me because that can that means that you can efficiently uh, reduce how you, you can ch decide to do other things. Um, while having certain things automated. So I'm also a huge technology guy as well. I love my technology. Uh, so yeah, uh, other than that, um, I'll tell you a bit more about my undergrad. I completed my bachelor's of materials engineering at the University of Alberta. Uh, so I actually, it was it's just in Edmonton where I am at and I didn't really have to go anywhere. I specialized in functional and nanomaterials. Um, so that basically means fabrication of uh, structures in the micro slash nano realm. So we're saying probably like the things that are about the thickness of the width of your hair or smaller, especially in the case of nano. So I did a lot of nano coatings and fabrication of microstructures. I was a co-president of the functional and nano robotics team at the University of Alberta. As part of that, we got to fabricate our robot and interact with, uh, uh, well, interact with um, uh, camera systems and automate it. And we had a chance to automate it all. And I thought that was uh, a pretty cool experience to have. So we were able to uh, manipulate this robot that's about uh, 50 microns in size so that's about the width of your human hair so we actually had to use a microscope to see where our robot was i was then able to actually automate the path of this robot um, for simplicity purposes i'll say it's a figure eight and i was able to control this all programmatically so being able to see the robot um, having the machine understand uh, where the robot is and bit depending on where that robot is to then uh, the machine to then send signals 
to a, a bunch of equipment that would move the robot around. Uh, so, so that was actually, I thought that was pretty cool experience to have because that, that really encompassed like everything that I wanted, kind of wanted to do. Um, this uh, micro robot challenge had applications in medicine. So I definitely wanted to do medicine. I definitely wanted to also have some sort of programmatic element to it. So there was definitely lots of programming and there was also lots of functional and nanomaterials, which is engineering. So I kind of like to, um, in any, uh, so I kind of really like my engineering. I like my computer science and I like my medicine. So I, I'm definitely a huge fan of all three stuff. Um, because of this nano robotics, I was also able to get into medicine. Oh, sorry, I was also able to get into um, uh, uh, Germany to compete internationally, where our team uh, got third place internationally in the functional and nano robotics challenge. So I thought that was pretty cool. Also had a chance to explore Berlin, Frankfurt, and uh, those were awesome cities. Um, had some really cool time drinking a lot of beer. Uh, beer ended up being cheaper than water. So I was only trying to be economically conscious, right? Um, so other than that, yeah, I came back to Edmonton after that. And well, guess what? I decided to start working. Um, on one hand, there was the path of me being getting into masters, doing more research and all that. And then, that, then on the other hand, um, there was me making money so that I could uh, sustainably live. So I decided that path and I uh, decided to um, s study uh, and I decided to work in the oil sands for about six years. Um, at that point, uh, I did want to get into medicine as well, um, but I didn't have the GPA required, especially because engineering uh, it was very tough. And I wasn't sure if, uh, I, I, I knew that I didn't have a chance of getting into med medicine, especially in Canada. At that point, I was not aware of other options that existed, um, mainly the Caribbean, Ireland, and Australia, and even the US. So we'll, I'll talk more about it later on. Um, so I ended up working in the oil and gas industry for six years. Um, and about two years ago, I actually, uh, and I'd actually given up hope on ever being a doctor. I didn't realize I could be a doctor. So about two years ago, though, I met a few friends that were studying in the Caribbean. And I sort of talked more about it with them. And after talking with them, I kind of was inspired. I was like, you know what? Hey, maybe my dreams of being a doctor can, after all, be true. And I started doing more research. I looked up online and I, I, I was really, I was, as you know, I really thought I had a chance of getting into the Caribbean. So I didn't, I didn't necessarily apply, but during my process of doing all this research, I also met up with another guy who, uh, who I was introduced to through by my uh, family. And he was studying uh, dentistry in Australia, uh, in a, a, at the University of Sydney. So that was an option that I'd never really explored. I didn't really realize that Australia did this. And so I had a chat with them. And um, I, after doing some more research on it, I realized that, hey, you know what, Australia is an actual like legit option that I, you know, never even considered. So I'll, I'll go over my four options that I had. So my first option was going into the US and the US just was just plain old expensive, you know. The US dollar, especially in the condition that we're in right now, um, I'm so happy that I didn't go into the US because it would have just been super expensive. The other p p part about the US is it's, it's, it's its healthcare system. I didn't want to support uh, the way the system that the way that the US worked, uh, especially not when it came to um, being able to provide health care to only those people that could afford it. So I wasn't re really a fan of that system. I then considered the Caribbean. But again, kind of with the Caribbean, we're running into the same problem, because they still charge you in US dollars. Um, and at the end of the day, you would still be practicing in the US. Now, there were some 
there were some of my friends who got into Canada, but I think that's very, very few and far between. And otherwise, you're mostly stuck in the U.S. if you study in the Caribbean. So the U.S. and Caribbean were were not necessarily the best options, but if uh, worst came to worst, I would have been okay with studying in the Caribbean um, in one of those top three universities. Um, Canada was obviously not an option because it's just way more competitive, <laughs> way, way too competitive in Canada. Um, and <clears throat> given my grades, I didn't decide to even apply in Canada. And then finally, Australia. Um, so I really like Australia. Um, actually, let's talk about Ireland. Uh, so the thing with Ireland, I also met a lot of friends who were studying in Ireland. The thing with Ireland is uh, they there there is not an option for you to consider for you to work in Ireland. And I felt like, I, at least looking up online. I felt like Ireland and Australia were, in terms of education level, were on the same sort of level. So I felt like Australia was a bit better in that regard because um, if worse came comes to worse and I couldn't practice in Canada, I could always practice in Australia. And that really was the selling point for me because it really gave me assurance that at the end of the day, um, if I was not able to match back into Canada after spending basically hundreds of thousands of dollars, I still had the backup option of being able to practice in Australia. So that really set my mind to Australia and that is why I decided to uh, apply to Australian universities um, completely. And I applied to a whole bunch of Australian universities and I was really surprised and uh, amazed that I actually got accepted into most of the universities that I'd applied to. Uh, so I got, um, so I was, I was really like, I was, I was really flabbergasted. Like that was, that was awesome. And so I had, I got into University of Queensland, University of Sydney. Um, I got into Flinders University and I also got into Deakin University. And the reason why I chose Deakin out of all four universities um, was because one, it was ended up being a lot cheaper um, than, um, than, than for example, UQ and UCID. Two, the fact that they had a smaller cohort size. Um, the fact that, you know, like at Deakin, they actually consider you as an individual instead of just a, a number really sold it to me because that really meant that they were more focused on your career success. And that was really a good feeling to have, especially, you know, um, when financially speaking, you're putting on a lot of money into this endeavor. And finally, uh, as an international student, it really helped the fact that Deakin uh, resides in the state of Victoria. So as a international student, uh, international students have a higher priority in the state of Victoria compared to other states. So that that was my third reason of why I chosen to Deakin. So I know at the end of the day that when I graduate from Deakin, um, that I will have a very high likelihood of having a job in Australia and two, also being able to match back to Canada. So that's kind of why the reason why I chose Deakin. And I'm really glad that I did that after interacting with uh, students at Deakin here and with the teachers here. You know, everyone sort of knows you by name and everyone is out there watching out for your best interest and uh, making sure that you succeed. Uh, we, they have counselors here and even talking with individual um, professors, you know, really, really gives you that one-on-one, one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one interaction that I doubt that you could have that at other universities. I've made some great friends here. The fact that it's a small cohort size, about 150, also really, you know, allows you to get to know people here. Um, instead of, you know, for example, if I, in my, at my old university, at University of Alberta, it was a class size about 300, 400 people where you didn't really get to know people. But at Deakin University, you really get to know people and you really sort of, sort of get to know what's going on in everyone's lives and, and, you know, really feel connected. So 
anyways, I'm really happy uh, to that I've that I was able to get into Deakin and that I'm at Deakin. Um, the residences are awesome. I don't think I could, uh, I didn't really expect uh, my experience to be this great, but I'm really happy uh, to be here and to be able to pursue my dream. My one advice for you guys would be to, um, you know, never give up on your dream, to keep working on it uh, little by little, to keep getting better. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes it may just take a longer time, but keep getting better, keep chugging away at it, keep finding those efficiencies and, uh, and you know um be a doctor so anyways thanks a lot guys uh thank you for listening and if you guys have any questions please feel free to email me thanks cheers